Okay, I think I'm live. I think there's like one person here. Hi. I am going to sit here and wait a couple minutes and see if some more folks come in. Um, I don't expect very many because this is kind of like last minute in the middle of the day when people are trying to work and be busy and productive, right? Hi, Linda. Hi, Holly. Hi, Gina. You guys are awesome. Thank you for joining me. So, um, we're just going to wait a couple seconds, minutes. And W Purple Sparkles is here. My phone is blowing up. Well, there's like eight people here. So, um, I have to figure out, do you guys want me to show you the what sold first or talk first? I mean, I don't care either way. I have my tabs ready and I can share my screen. Anybody have a preference? The shirt though. And I still haven't fixed the um, Wi-Fi adapter, so I may cut in and out, but I think if I ever had a live show where something didn't go wrong and everything went right, it just wouldn't be a flippin' hippo show because, you know, it's always amateur hour up in here. <laughs> well, I'm talking right now, spiraled out. Hello. Hi, Adriana. You guys can hear me, right? Because I'm just sitting here talking. Okay, you guys can. Yeah, I, um, I'm on a new computer, Linda. Um, Keith built me a new computer to do my videos on. And I'm like right in um, one of those bay windows of our Victorian house, like all the sunlight's coming in on me. The only thing is, is the wire adapter, the Wi-Fi adapter we have on this one kind of cuts in and out sometimes. So um, we're either gonna steal another one from one of our other computers or buy a new one this weekend. Rum and Coke without tomatoes. It is only noon. I'm not having no rum and Coke right now. I have um, I have coffee in one of my favorite mugs. I actually bought this from, um, oh, I'm going to feel so bad that I'm brain farting her name because I'm friends with her on um, Instagram. She was having a sale because she was raising money to save a horse, and I wanted help, so I bought this from her. And I'm just not... Ooh, somebody finally caught me live. How you doing? <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm just going to talk first and then we'll look at what's all. It's mostly blush because that's what I mostly flip. So I haven't done a vlog since before Vegas. So I really haven't like been updating you guys on um, anything other than what's been selling and what we've been getting in our hauls. So I kind of want to start with the... Um, Thank you, Whitley. This is like my favorite cup. I, I like probably even like this cup more than my Harley Quinn mug, just because it's funny. I only date superheroes because, you know, nerd. Hi, Fred. So um, the bad news is you guys know we have um, what I refer to as our local honey pot thrift that it was like literally within walking distance of our house. And they had 99 cent day on Saturday, and they always had like um, good hard goods. That was where we found a couple of our DVD VCR combos. Um, so <laughs> we went there the day before we left for Vegas. I don't like the shirt, but thank you. I mean, I like the shirt, but it's people get fat. So anyway, um, we went there the day before Vegas, and we got some stuff, and then. Um, we got back on a Saturday, like, I want to say we landed at like five or six in the morning and we came home and we power nap for four hours and we did not source. We just started listing, listing, listing and sharing, 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 trying to get our sales back up after being on vacation mode and everything. And then the next week we went to go to our local honey pot thrift and it was closed when I was really sad. There was like a sign on the door that just said, we're sorry, this location is closed and they were just gone. With my sad face, I am so sad. That was like, we found so many good 
things in that store. We used to find our Guitar Hero guitars and a lot of my plush and um, Miss Me jeans and stuff like that for 99 cents. They're gone. And while we were kind of like outside reading the sign, Clark, one of the guys that worked in the back, I mean, you guys know we've been going to this local thrift for like a year and a half and they all knew us there and they really liked us. So Clark, he lives in the area too and he saw us and he came across the street and he's like, hey, Star, you saw the sign and I'm like, yeah, what happened? And he's like, they just went under and they just couldn't, they just couldn't anymore. But see, the really sad part was they, um, they've been struggling for a while. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but back in November, they stopped their 99 cent days and just did half off for a while. And then they went back to the 99 cent days because they lost a lot of business. And yes, what these wears, they did do a remodel. So in May, they closed the whole store for the whole month of May and did this huge remodel and revamped it. And it looked all fancy, like a consignment store and stuff. And then they just, I don't know, maybe they spent too much money on, sorry, on their remodel. So, um, yeah, that happened. That happened like a month and a half ago. Like I said, I haven't done a vlog in a long time. Um, I'm thinking about doing a new series, but I kind of, I kind of want to get a feel for the lay of the land from um, the viewers before. Hi, Alma. How are you? Um, because I do try to keep it upbeat in here and I try to be positive and, um, but I'm also a funny person and I like to enjoy things that I find funny. Um, I apparently am officially a real YouTuber now, you guys. I have withheld comments, about 38 of them that are all mean and hateful <laughs> and, um, some of them are really, really bad, like mean. Um, hi Wade, how are you doing? Good to see you here. Thank you for stopping in. So anyway, I was thinking about doing a new series called Hippo Hate. And it, like Hippo Hate Star reads mean comments, kind of like that Jimmy Kimmel, is that his name? Where the celebrities read the mean tweets. Um, so, but there's bad words. So like I would literally have to put like a warning before the video and all those videos would never be monetized because some of these people use very strong words about me um who could be mean to me you would be surprised um holly and fred actually saw the um comments and there's a couple other people in here i see here today that may have seen the comments that i'm talking about um yeah but see to me they're just funny um like you guys watch Gary Vee? I like Gary Vee. And I know that I saw one time he said that he just pities or he feels sorry for his haters because they spend all this energy and this time to write mean comments or to hate watch you when they don't even like you. And that's like time and energy you could honestly be spending working on your business, sourcing, or just surrounding yourself with people that you enjoy being around. Like, I don't, I kind of agree with Gary Vee. Like, I pity them. Like, wow. Like, if, if I'm around somebody who's making me feel bad about myself or I don't enjoy being, I'm not, I just remove myself from the situation. I try to only ever be around people that make me happy, that make me laugh, that lift me up and make me positive and support me in everything I do. So, um, hi, Jamie. Thank you for coming in. Um, beat them with a brick. No, I would rather just blast them out and read their comments and let the world see how mean they are to me. Um, a lot of the comments are just like ridiculous. Like that doesn't even make sense. Like someone called me a sellout before I was even monetized. Like, okay, yeah, I'm not even monetized. I'm making the big old bucks now. Um, did Fred answer? Fred, did you get any deer today? I didn't see you go live. You had been going live with your um, deer hunting. I don't know if Fred's even still in the chat. I should blow up his phone. Uh, um, Whitley, I think that um, I think some people just hate watch. There's Fred. I was gonna blow up your phone. Full draw on a spike. Couldn't get a shot. You'll get one sooner or later. Um. So okay. So. Well, how would you guys feel about like that hippo hate series? Like, 
I would really have to like put up a warning though. I mean, some of them are very, um, um, uh, like Tarantino <laughs> language, I guess. Um, and then I wanted to tell you about the, 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 the thrift store closing. The good news is that we still have our Goodwills that are still 99 cents on Sundays and, um, we are moving into pallets and wholesale. And I am looking into some other things, hard good wise, hard goods wise. That kind of Fred's helping me with a little bit. Once in a while, it might be fun. Um, Fred. Um, yeah, like once in a while, like I would save them up until they were like forty and do one. Um, I have like 40 now, like seven are the same thing. Just one guy saying, kill yourself over and over. Cause that's awesome to say to somebody. Um, RVA flips, it closed. No, it was closed when we got back from Vegas. It was done. We haven't had it for a month, um, but we are getting pallets and wholesale and I'm looking into um, some something else to start getting some other stuff. Um, I don't really want to say anything because if it doesn't pan out, then, but whatever. Um, I guess that's really like all the big news. Um, we're focusing on fourth quarter, everyone is. And um, I was really sick for a couple days, like with a migraine, like not sick sick, but like with a bad migraine and Holly knows. Um, they can really like put me down like a bad enough migraine I'm nauseated I'm sick I can't get out of bed and then it takes like a couple days afterwards to kind of feel like normalized again like even right now I'm like Ugh. and I woke up at six o'clock this morning and I was so 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 not ready to be awake but I did a whole bunch of work and then I sat in my chair on my game pad and started to do posh on the phone and I like literally fell asleep so they moved their inventory to other stores, Linda. So when I talked to Clark, the guy that works there, he um, he told me that a lot of the employees actually didn't lose their jobs, which is a good thing. So a lot of the employees got to keep their jobs and just transfer to other um, of these stores in the area. And Clark actually was tasked with driving the truck and moving the inventory. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now and show you guys some of the things that sold and I'll try to keep an eye on the um, comments. Let me see. You guys know me. I'm like, no, that's not sharing my screen. Woo! Yes, migraines suck. Holly has a good trick for them though. Is it Advil liquid gel? Holly that you say? And two bananas? Type it out for everybody, because that helps. 60 pounds from the bends. Holy wow. All right, am I sharing my screen? I am. Okay, so we'll start down here with Fozzie. Um, he actually was in a haul video not too long ago. This guy came from the thrift store that just closed our local honey pot. He was a dollar and um, he is from Vegas. I found him like right before he left for Vegas. I was like totally thrilled. And so he was a dollar and I took a best offer of 25 for him. And he went first class to his new forever home. Here is a Donald Trump tie. This tie in particular was $7 and we made the decision to spend up and pay the $7 for it. Most of you guys that have been around for a while know that I do pay $7 on a regular basis for um, silver jeans and um, Robert Graham shirts and things like that. So if you know you're gonna get a good return on it, I think $7 is okay. This was 100% silk. It has the gold bar which you know makes the trunk ties a little more valuable. And it's a really pretty um, blue paisley. Um, this tie in particular, I cannot see the chat right now, but Jamie and Holly, you can comment if you'd like. I took pictures of it from the Goodwill and sent it to Holly and Jamie and said, it's seven bucks, what do you think? And Jamie was like, get it. And you guys, it sold for 40. I got the full asking price on it. And um, 
no best offer. They just straight up bought it for 40, which for us, like never happens on eBay. We usually settle for 36, 35, 34 ish for the Trump ties. And we only get the 40 on posh. So that was um, a really good buy. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Jamie and Holly for your input and making sure that I bought it. Melissa McCarthy, 7'7 seven, seven women's plus size jeans. This is an amazing plus size brand, you guys, if you can find it. I paid up for these. I paid um, half of $7, which is $3.50. And I got them at Goodwill. Um, I did pay $3.50 for them because I know that the Melissa McCarthy 7'7 seven, seven jeans flip really well. I guess I should be flipping through here because you're looking at the screen, not at me. Um, uh, the 7-7 seven, seven jeans without Melissa McCarthy's name on them, whether they're regular or plus size, I really would only recommend getting if you guys can get them for a very low cost of goods, like a dollar, um, because those flip for about 20-ish. These went for 25. Um, I priced them at 30 knowing full well that I was um, pricing them way too high. Um, they usually go for about 25 to 30 and they were up for like three days and I had offers coming in like all day. No one wanted to come up over like 20 and the first person that finally was 25. I was like, you know what? I'll take it. Um, you guys will remember, um, T-Bone from a haul video and Clifford was in my plush haul off with Wade's Ventures on our live show. Um, he is the Coles Cares, not the Scholastic. I had two Cliffords. Um, that one had writing on his tag. But I put the pair of them together and asked for 20 because there were turds when I caught these that were selling them individually for $6 free ship. And I was like, uh. So I put them together. I asked for 20. I got my full asking price. They actually went first class. They weighed like 10 ounces together. Both of these dogs only weighed 10 ounces. So I Franken bag them and take the bags together. Um, Hallmark, Peanuts, Astronaut, Snoopy. This was at a yard sale. I paid, I want to say 50 cents, but he might have been a dollar. But he is so super cool. Look, he has a helmet on. And um, he's a little astronaut. And I, I feel like he had NASA somewhere on him. And I can't find it. He had damage. You can see right here. He had scratches and stuff. Um, he was $30 and he was free shipping. Um, the gentleman that bought him contacted us and asked us to throw priority on him because he was free shipping first class because he wanted them faster. He's next door in Ohio, but he wanted them like really quickly. So he um, asked us to throw the priority on there and he paid shipping as well, which is cool. And I feel like I should check in with the comments real quick. So let me do that and then we'll keep going with this. And there's my face again and I gotta find the comments. There they are. So there it is, Advil sinus congestion pain. Got a list. Yes, go list if you need to list, you should be working. Go ahead and head to the doctors. That's never fun. Hish, hish, hishra Bat says, I wouldn't do the hippo hate. If people don't like your videos, they should just move on. I wish you wouldn't give them any attention. That's a good point. Hello, eBay Life. Wade's Ventures, are you um claiming that you won the um the plush haul off? Because as far as I remember. You cheated, and I still won, right? See? See? That episode went differently. Um, that wasn't a price on the tush tag, Kelly. That was just like a little mark. It was like, um, like a number. I think it was an S. I don't know. I'm going to look. I'm going to look right now. It was not a price, though. It was just like a little mark. It was an S. It was an S. So yeah, I always take the tags off unless they're vintage. Like I've had, um, I found Disney parks, like Walt Disney World plush that's like 20 years old and it has the original price tag on it and the hang tags. I'll leave that on just because 
obviously people know they're going to pay more than I the item costed in the 80s, right? Oh, it's Elsie. Hi. Um, with prices on the tag, I don't really ever find animals with prices on the tag. Um, the places that I shop for my plush, well, number one, mainly yard sales, and they either have stickers on them from the yard sales, or I buy the whole thing. Like, I just, I mean, you guys know, I'll just walk up to somebody and be like, I want all your plush, put them in a box, I'll give you this much money for it. Um, and then I get them, the local honeypot thrift used to put little stickers on their head or their ear, but never wrote, wrote on them. And Goodwill either put stickers on them, and sometimes they'll um, have like the tags, like the clothes have. Add a one in front of the price you paid. Have a good day, NW's Purple Sparkles. And good luck with your first day of school there. Okay, I'm gonna um, show you guys the rest of the stuff real quick and then I'll come back. I just feel like when I'm just talking um, during my screen, it's kind of like, boom, okay. I showed you him. Okay, so this guy's really cute. He is the uh, mascot for the Philadelphia Phillies baseball team, which is on the other side of Pennsylvania, out near Holly. Um, he was adorable. I found him at the Goodwill. He was $1.99, but he was the half off color. So unlike for a dollar, yes, he was ginormous. Um, I got the full 20 for him and he was big, but he only weighed like 10 ounces. So he just went in a, um, a really big poly bag. We have giant ones for our plush, the big plush like this. And he's actually a pillow pet. I just thought he was cute. I don't even know, like y'all know I don't do sports cause I'm a dork. I do comic books and stuff and video games, but um, is he like an ant eater? <laughs> I don't know, but he's cute. This is a Boyd's bear. Um, you can see that he's only $10, but that's because he weighed like eight pounds. Um, I think I want to, I want to go look. I don't know. He was really heavy. He was like between five and eight, I think. Um, I don't know about you guys. I'm just going to bring this up real quick. Whenever I'm looking at my items and the shipping on it, it always gives me the, the um, calculated price for Pittsburgh. Like, I'm never – it. so I, I don't remember how much um, – I want to say he was close to $30 all said and done. Um, he weighed – he was really heavy. He's jointed and he moves, and um, he weighed a lot, and um, – I put calculated shipping on him. He was a dollar at my my local honey pot thrift that is no longer around and that I am so devastated about. This is a poo. Poo came in that huge, 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 huge shot I got at the beginning of the summer. Um, when I came home with the giant box and so many plush, it came out to like 77 cents a piece. This is one of those. He um, is a rattle. Like when you shook him, he's a baby rattle. He was so super cute. And um, he was only in the store for like two weeks and then he went on my 5% off sale. I got the full 19 for him. All right, speaking of star not doing sports, this must not be a very good player because this has been around since last August. And I can, sell, I can tell you that because of the background. This was before we had the setup we have now. And we had like this curtain thingy. Um, Oh my God, I found it for a dollar and I was just like, oh my God, it's football jersey, someone will buy it. Yeah, no, it sat around forever. And I actually think I showed it to Casey and he laughed at me and said as much. It was like back in, way back in the day. Um, but it did finally sell. We took a best offer of 25. It's a year old and we were tired of looking at it. So bye. I'm not going to buy any more jerseys unless it's like, um, I guess I recognize Roethlisberger <laughs> and, um, oh, I used to know the name of the Patriots quarterback. My friend had a thing for him. And then look, you guys, my coats are starting to sell. This was a dollar at an estate sale and, um, 
It sold for $23.74. I put free shipping on it, and um, I proceeded to have a battle with a padded flat rate envelope, and I won. I didn't even have to use a hair dryer. I just uh, folded it real tiny and um, exerted my strength on the bag and got it in there. But yeah, that was only a dollar at an estate sale. And so like my codes are already starting to go. Um, it's, you know, August and it's still hot in most places, but my um, codes are already starting to go. Okay, I'm gonna try to catch up on some of these comments. Hi, Teresa, you're in Pittsburgh too, huh? I'm sorry, I'm even like chewing gum. You guys, I am like the most amateur YouTuber ever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. freaking cow. Holly says, I don't think, no, he's just like a thing, right, Holly? He's just like the fanatic, but he looks like an anteater to me or um, an aardvark, I think. Isn't Philly the defending Super Bowl champs? I thought Pittsburgh was, as far as I knew, Fred. I thought like the Steelers won the won the Super Bowl like every other year. Um, Fred says he literally had no idea stuffed animals sold. I know you don't because you told me that. Um, what did you say when I was showing you my plushies? Oh, those go for like ten or fifteen a pop, and I was like, try twenty five and thirty. And I get them for under a dollar, so. This is why I love plush, guys. It's my, um, my thing. Tom Brady, yes. Yes, Tom Brady. Um, I used to work with the girl when I, when I was the house manager at um, my last job, and she just loved him. Why isn't Fred on camera co-hosting? I feel like this could be interesting. Well, funny thing, Elsie, <laughs> he probably doesn't want me to announce it now, but that might be happening towards the beginning of fourth quarter because he is a hard goods expert, so. He's the product of too many, who? Polly, the, the mascot or Tom Brady? I mean, I really don't even know. Like, I, I know, um, I don't know. I know the difference between the sports. Uh, hey, Fred, be, don't be abusing your wrench there, kid. A Philly fanatic. So yeah, that's like just like a handful of what sold. Um, I grabbed from last Monday through Sunday, like I usually do. Um, Sales, sales, S-A-I-L-S, have been extremely freaking slow. Can I say freaking? Will I still be monetized? Um, how's everybody else's sales? Like, here's the thing. Ours are, like, being really slow through the week, and then we'll, like, blow up over the weekend. And then Tuesday will be back. And then Wednesday will pick back up. Although today, I don't even know. I'm going to look. I sold two more plushies. I'll show them to you guys real quick. Sales are on pace for August. Slow. So apparently my phone doesn't work. I'm going to reboot it. I don't know what it's doing. Add a renter. Do you do free returns? RVA flips, I'm asking you. Do you do free returns? Um. They're just slow. But here's the thing, the weird thing, and um, I remember this last year too. At the end of August, my plush sales go up. I don't know why. 
I sell way more plush like the last couple weeks of August into the first couple weeks of September. This isn't a big one. I'll show you guys him. He didn't go. He's caught probably more like what Fred thought plushies went for. He went for nine fifty. He's just a little Ernie, um, but I think I paid like he was at the Benz. I think he cost like ten cents per week. We didn't follow summer pricing down, so our sales slumped. But we should see a big bump in sales. Well, yeah, considering what you sell, Fred. I'm surprised you even have a summer slowdown with what you sell. Honestly. Honestly. Yeah, Holly, you actually have, um, you're remodeling your house and stuff, right? You've got a lot going on, girl. Like, a lot. Teresa said, your sales are better during the week. See, that's, that's weird. Because ours are like, well, here's the thing, though. And I think I've told you guys this before. On Poshmark, on Saturdays, I do offers to likers at 20% off with free shipping. Um, and I can do that because I price my stuff so high on Poshmarks, like higher than eBay um, prices. And I do that so I can do that. So every Saturday I sit down and anything that has likers in my closet, I offer 20% off and um, free shipping. And I'll get five or six sales from that, like my Posh will blow up. And then eBay just blows up. We also have auctions that we run. I feel like I'm talking like a Valley girl. And you guys telling from the West Coast originally. <laughs> um, we run auctions from Tuesday through Sunday as well. And those are always ending on Sunday night. Um, that could be part of why we have so many more sales too. Linda does free returns. Our free returns. Here's the thing. And I know that um, some people are going to disagree with this, but this is what works for us. So if it's first class, it has free shipping and free returns. And if it weighs more than a pound, it has calculated shipping and no free returns. And the only exception is my jeans. My women's jeans, I do free shipping on them because they go on the padded flat, but they're not free returns because I'm not going to be $14 in on shipping on one of my dumb mall brands I get for 99 cents and flip for 20 because then by the time it comes back, I would be $15 in on that pair of jeans. You know what I mean? We could be better than got both a return and a bad fraction quest. Uh, Trina, that's tough, but you got to kind of keep your emotions out of your business. It's just business, right? Okay, that makes sense. Fred said nobody buys home video audio while they're on vacation and out camping. It's in the winter. Yeah, so what I think that kind of is true with everything, not like based on what it is, but um, people are outside when it's nice and they're doing stuff. And then when it's rainy and it's snowy and it's cold and they're stuck inside, they're going to get on their computers and they're going to get on their phones and they're going to do more shopping. Then the bartender said, like, oh, my God, totally. I actually do a really good Valley Girl, but most people find it to be very annoying. So I try not to do it too often. <laughs> like, oh, my God. I went to Starbucks, and I got a pumpkin spice, and I was wearing my Uggs. Okay, I had another plush I was going to show you guys. Do, do, do. That sold today. The Ernie that I showed you. Oh, I already showed you. So I'm the wire face because I told you guys I only showed you sales from last Monday through Sunday. And he's shipping out today. Liar face. It was an inadvertently accidental lie, you guys. I didn't mean to. You know, I try to be transparent. Holly says you do that way too well, Star. <laughs> I do. Yes, Trina, that exactly, that's exactly it. Um, you just gotta be positive and just realize it's gonna sell again. Um, 
what I like to do with my returns, and I didn't yesterday because I, I was down with my migraine and I thought, I'm going to knock everything in my house over. <laughs> it's way back here. But usually what I do is I take it as soon as it comes. I've got one right here. And I take it out. She sent these back because they didn't fit. And she actually opened it properly for not fitting. Uh, you guys, we have like five item not as describes for doesn't fit. And eBay won't change them. Ugh. Anyway, as soon as I get a return, like when the mail comes in, um, I check them out. And if they look good, I go in, I refund their money right away, and I find it and sold, and I do sell similar. And um, get it right back in the store. I give it a new location. We keep um, everything in bins, and we have these locations on them. So when we ship them out, we take them off of the packages and put them in our our little cow. So I just grab one out and give it a new location. But yeah, just put it right back in. Somebody's going to buy it. If somebody bought it the first time, somebody else is going to be attracted to it and want it. I really need to take care of these and refund the buyer. Um, I don't know if they did it yet or not. I heard they were going to, you remember how we used to have seven days to refund them after the tracking show delivered? Um, it's getting changed to like two days. I don't even know if they already did it, but it's going to get changed to two days. Why sell similar instead of relist? Because when you sell similar, the item gets a brand new, what's the word I'm looking for? Somebody help me. I told you that I'm like still off today from having, um, when you sell similar, it is a brand new listing. Um, it gets a new number. It gets pushed up in the search engine right away as a brand new item. It gets preferential treatment from Cassini. Um, sell similar things tend to get sale, uh, stale. Not algorithm, like an order number, but it's not an order number. I have an entire video on why we do sell similar instead of relist and um, 30 days instead of good till cancel because it kind of goes hand in hand if you do. If you have your business model set up the way we do, the good till canceled wouldn't work. So we do the 30 days and then we do first thing every morning I go into my unsolds and I sell some more. New ID number. Thank you, Holly. Save me, please. I'm still I still feel like like, I don't have a headache anymore. I feel a lot better. Um, but I'm groggy. I'm really tired. Um, just, uh, but it could also be because I haven't been sleeping a lot either. Yes, it treats it like a brand new listing. Hi, Fidgety. Thank you for coming in. I'm glad that you could join me. See, I thought I would just go, like, surprise live in the middle of the afternoon and see who came. Because I know that um, sometimes Sunday nights are hard for people. You know what? I don't even have a guest this Sunday. Because it's Labor Day weekend, ain't right? Oh my gosh, did you hear that? I lived out in um, near Holly, like in the Lancaster area for 10 years. And you just heard me talk like a, a person from York. It's Labor Day weekend, ain't <laughs> My first year and a half, I was doing real estate. I was paying eBay all my profits, and I called eBay, and they told me to do so some more. I don't, I don't understand. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, migraines take as much out of me as the flu does too. It's like two or three days later, I might finally start. Do you know what? I actually. Um, I feel worse today post migraine than I felt post food poisoning in Vegas. Like after I had that whole bout of food poisoning, when it was done, it was done. I was fine. Um, I still had like a stomach ache the whole time we were there, but this is like, but I'm trying to get back into the group things and work. So yeah, ours are 10 cents. And 
we were going to get an anchor store at one point, but ha, ah, we're below 2,000 listings right now. Posh is like a monster. It eats your life. Poshmark eats your life. When we started on Poshmark, we kind of made the decision that I, well, I do YouTube as well. I do, um, I do a lot. You guys know Keith works outside of the house, so I'm not at all like saying he doesn't do his fair share. He still works outside of the house. And he built this store up for himself to quit his job and then let me do it when I hurt my back. So, you know, he does what he can. He works two full-time jobs, basically. Um, but when we started on Posh, um, we made the decision that I was going to kind of back off of eBay a little bit. Um, and I was going to take over Poshmark and really focus on that and doing the YouTube. And, um, of course, keeping up with the unsolds and helping him with shipping and stuff. But by doing that, we've dropped below 2,000 listings. Like, if you actually look at our store right now, we're at, like, 2,027. But I never count the auctions as listings because they just go in on Tuesday and they end on Sunday. There's, like, 100 and something of them. Um, so if you look, we're over 2,000 right now, but I don't count the auctions. So we've dropped below 2,000 because it's just Keith listing, and he does about 20 a day on his own. Um, but we typically used to do like 40 to 50 between the two of us a day. Uh, Kelly, don't worry. Fred doesn't listen too well either. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I think it's 3,400 listings, Ben that you need to have before the anchor store pays for itself. If you do the math, it's 3,400 listings. And at that point, you're breaking even and the anchor store is paying for itself. Um, Megan Winnie has an anchor store and she's aiming to have 5,000 listings. So, fidgety, the thought of all that sharing and liking turns me off. Um, yeah, here's the thing. It's tedious. It's tedious. It takes a lot of time and it's the same thing over and over. Um, I mean, I would say the plus side, because I try to always see the plus side of every situation, um, because it's tedious and you're just clicking the same thing over and over. I can stream. Um, I'm on SVU now in case anybody cares. I did finish CSI before Vegas and I just wrapped up CSI Miami. I am now watching SVU. That show, I don't know if I can watch it for much longer. It's kind of intense. But yeah, I either stream my shows or um, watch other YouTubers when I need to watch a video to learn something. Um, I really just stream on my phone or watch YouTube on my phone because like, I will literally just like set it against my speaker or something like right here and look at it while I'm sharing. So that's like the plus side. You can watch stuff but it takes a lot of time um Kila Poshmark takes so much more time than eBay because it's a social platform and you have to share your closet and by that it sorry guys there's like some kind of a big vehicle making noise and it distracted me. Okay, so it's easier to list on Posh. That's that's a lot faster. It's much easier to list. Um, if I already have pictures and measurements taken, I can do 10 to 15 an hour on eBay, depending on what I'm doing. Plus, it's more like 10 to 12, because I do kind of comp those a little bit more. And when I'm doing jeans, I can do 15, because I do the same brands over and over, and I don't even comp them anymore. I know I'm starting that. Um, but when I cross post to Poshmark or just list to Poshmark, I can do like 20 to 25 an hour. So it's a lot easier to list, but then you have 300 items in your store or 200 or whatever you have, your, not your store, your closet. And you have to click each one individually and share it and click it and share it and click it and share it. <laughs> and then you have to share other people back and then you have to follow people. And then you have to go to these parties and share from there. Um, so it's pretty time intensive. Um, Sydney, she was on one of my live shows. You guys should um, look for it later if you want to watch the replay. 
she has the Posh Boss HQ Facebook group. She is an expert with Posh. She actually makes a full-time living on just Posh. She only just recently started dabbling in eBay. She owns, um, she's been on Posh for six years and she does it full time and makes her living that way. She says that you have to share your closet three times a day, plus all these other things. So you can be successful. So it is very time intensive. Um, last week, I actually just was sharing one today and our sales plummeted. So that happened. You got to do, you got to do the sharing. Kelly, we, we were very close to getting an anchor store at one time. Um, I think we were like at 2,900, 3,000 listings at one point, and we were really, really pushing to get the anchor store. And then um, we got into this where the wheels were spinning, like the more we listed, the more we sold, and we kind of got stuck right around 27, 28. Um, push it up very close to three, and then it just kind of dropped off when I started doing YouTube and other activities. Because, I mean, I used to sit here and listen. I do nothing but eBay. Before I had a YouTube channel, before we had Poshmark, Macari, Bonanza, all these other things, I used to only do eBay. So I would do four hours of work and list 40 items a day, you know? So we kind of dropped off. Binge watch, yeah. I have to have something on Fidgety. If I don't have a TV show on or YouTube, I literally look like this while I'm sharing. and. It doesn't matter. Well, I don't think I ever get enough sleep. I was about to say it doesn't matter how well rested I am, but I honestly don't think I ever actually get enough sleep. Um, but I'll be sitting there like, you know, with my mouse and like, like falling asleep. It's ridiculous. You are welcome, Keela. 3,400, Holly, 3,400 items and you should break even for an anchor store. Um, it's, I want to say it's like 300 a month or something. And then like we pay 10 cents a listing now. I don't know. Keith sat down with Casey um, because we, we thought it was 2,400 and we hit 2,500 in January and Keith went to get it. Um, the anchor store, and he was like, wait, 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 this isn't right. This math isn't right. So we sat down with Casey and figured it out. It's 3400 But I didn't know, like, why or what the amounts were. Instagram combined with eBay. It's, no, it's like, ugh, I don't even know what it's like. It's, um, Posh is its own world. It's, it's very much a social platform. And see, the thing is, and I'm not bashing it. I do make sales on it. You can list items for more money there. You get more money. It's easier to list, so you can list more faster. Um, but it's so intensive. And it's, I don't understand, okay, because when you're sharing your closet to the parties and then you're sharing to your followers, we're all resellers. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's like you're you're sharing your stuff to other people who are sharing their stuff to you and you all want to make a sale. So who's buying it? Um, and I guess that's where the offers to likers come into play because people who are actually interested in buying it like it and then you can send them that offer and they'll purchase it. And they also do a closet. I always call it close out, but it's clear out, I think. Um, every so often where you can drop your prices 10% and they notify all your likers for you and they do the shipping discount for you. Covers around 900 to 1,000 items. Yeah, Fidgety, we have a premium store too. We might be down to 1,000 soon. Sad. I might be back to normal by the weekend. Yeah, well, I think I need to get some extra sleep just to kind of not feel like that after migraine. There's, okay, correct me if I'm crazy. No, don't, because we know I am. But no, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Post-migraine recovery is almost like a hangover. Like, you still have, like, faint remnants of a headache, and you're foggy in your head, and you kind of are nauseous, and you don't feel good. 
The only thing Mandy Greg enjoys about Poshmark is the shipping ease. Yeah, I do. I like that they pay for shipping. Um, I like that I can use my PFRs, my padded flat rates, because those are free from the post office. Um, and I always have like three or four boxes around because I do a lot of jeans, especially in the winter and the fall. And I just use those. I make it pretty inside. Like I put it, um, I will show you what I put in there. So this is my business card. And yeah, it says an eBay store and it goes to my Posh customers. But what ifs? That is my business card. And this is what goes in our eBay orders. It's not focusing. So this one just basically says, thank you for your order. We appreciate your business. Um, we strive to provide positive five-star customer service, blah, blah, blah. Contact us if you have an issue. And then it has, um, we bought the domain flippinhippos.com and it redirects to our eBay store. So this is the one that goes to eBay customers. And then the business card, I put, I take, I have purple markers. I love purple, so. And I hand write thank you on the back of it. And I wrap it in tissue paper in a little bag to waterproof it. So if the tissue paper were to get wet, it wouldn't bleed on the clothing. And then I put it inside of a padded flat rate, which are free. So the only thing I'm having to pay for is a tissue paper. And I don't use my own polys or anything like that. You had your first guaranteed delivery sale last night. Anyone have the delivery time fail? Um, Lori, I haven't had the guaranteed delivery time fail, but I have had um, where the tracking number shows delayed. And for whatever reason, it got rerouted on accident or sitting at the post office. And if it shows that, you just ask um, ask your buyer nicely. Tell them you're sorry. You pray that your item didn't get there on time. Please open a item didn't receive case. And they can open that right through eBay. And um, they'll take care of it. They'll check out. You'll be able to upload the tracking number into the case. And eBay will check it out. And they'll take care of it because the eBay guaranteed delivery, um, they're responsible to pay for that, not you. <laughs> that was my Holly loves me because I'm crazy face in case anybody wondered what I just did. I read that and I was like, oh, she loves me. In general, what month do you tend to see a pickup in sales? Is it like someone flipped a switch? I really think that depends on what you sell, Fidgety. I want to ask Fred. Fred, it, for you, for what you sell, it probably is like a switch being flipped, I would assume. Um, with the used clothing, it's kind of like a, it's a slow. It's like a really slow roller coaster going up. But it's even, even used clothing increases in fourth quarter. Um, and I just think it's because people open their wallets more in fourth quarter. The holidays are coming. Um, people have their credit cards. People are just more willing to spend money, especially towards December. But I'm waiting to see if Fred answers me about the switch. Holly, you do a lot of hard goods too, right? Vintage clothing maybe? How does yours go? Does it tick up slow? See, and it depends too. Like the end of August, I see an increase in my plush every year. But then when I make that switch, kind of like in the next coming weeks where I'm not listing any shorts or swimsuits or anything like that, and I make that switch to my coats and my um, jeans and really focus on that, I will. Um, it is almost like someone's flipped the switch. But it's because now people are looking for that and I have it more than the other stuff. He's probably typing. Do you think Fred types one finger at a time? I'm kidding, Fred. Fidgety has 50-50. I probably do too, but I kind of like consider plush not hard goods because they're long tail, just like clothing. Um, the rare one will flip really fast, but I have like 400 in there, so I, I typically sell one or two a day, just kind of like building up the volume. 
Polly says hers is fairly gradual, but there's a spike right before hunting season. When is hunting season? I know Fred's hunting right now, but he's got his pre um, pre season thing that he's allowed to do it. I don't know what it's called in Bray, sorry. Reselling with Rob. Hi, thank you for coming. Um, he sells everywhere and everything, mostly hard goods. There's a trend of what gets purchased. It's changed dramatically from 10 years ago. Fair. I would agree with that. I've only been doing this for a year and a half, but my stepmother did it when I was growing up, and I have been a buyer for a long time. Lori Green. Lori, I'm going to butcher your last name, so I'm just going to call you Lori, hun. Um, I have more summer stuff to sell in the winter than winter stuff sell in the summer. Yes, exactly. I was going to say that. Um, people in the winter months, they go on vacations to warmer locales and they go on cruises and stuff. I sell a lot of swimsuits like in January and February. I think that's when people are getting fed up with being cold and they're going elsewhere. Most hunting is in October, November, December. Fred, you didn't answer my other question. So when we go to fourth quarter and sales tick up, are yours slow to tick up or do they, um, like a switch is flipped? Flip the switch. A switch is flipped. <laughs> yeah, they're online looking at their gear. Like I said, I already sold a coat. I'm excited. I'm like, what am I? And it's a barn coat. It's a chore coat. I believe it went to um, Indiana, somewhere where they have farms and stuff. Okay, Fred says his sales trend up starting in September, but not really a spike, just a steady increase. Cool. So I guess it's the same as for clothes. Um, my biggest advice to anybody as we go, get closer is to list more because you want to be ready. You want to, you want, here's what's going to happen. And this happened to us last year. And I think that was when we went below the 2,800 the first time. Um, we had a lot listed. We were ready, but we were selling so much more than we were used to. Um, we were barely replacing what we were selling when we were listing and we weren't growing anymore. And then your shipping is going to take longer because you're getting more items. So just like stock your store like crazy and then get organized. Get yourself organized because nothing sucks like spending an hour looking for a lost item, especially when you're busy and you're selling more. Lonnie at Garage Flips has good deals for hunters. Oh, Fidgety, you are in for a time of your life. Fourth quarter is awesome. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. This is only my second one, but it's like something in the air and all resellers are like high on money and high on sales and they're all over social media and they're excited and everybody's selling and everybody's happy. You don't see the hashtag eBay is broken. You don't see... Um, you don't see any of the negativity. It's just like, there's like this thing in the air where all the resellers are happy. Fred, thank you so much for the super chat. You were my first super chat. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, if he had to do what sells best for Q4 nostalgic items, I sold, I sold a lot of Halloween costumes last year, but I can't find any this year. I hit a yard sale in um, August that had boxes of them, and she wanted a dollar, and I was like, can I just like buy them off or like whatever? So I sold a lot of those. And then I had, um, I had all these dog Halloween costumes last year. I found them at the bins, like the little hats. They were so cute. Oh, my God, they were adorable. I sold a lot of those. Um, nostalgic items do well pretty much year round, but I mean, around this, the, the, 
<laughs> Around fourth quarter, Rob, you're right, because people are looking for gifts. That's the other thing. People are looking for presents for people. So, like, I have a lot of coffee mugs, like novelty coffee mugs, like this in my store, and they'll they'll start picking up in November. This is also the time when ties will pick up. Jamie Pace will tell you that. Ties sell really well. They start picking up right now. Yes, get your patootie organized. Girl, I don't even want to talk about it. When did I start my YouTube channel? January? And one of my, like my very second video was get yourself organized before you have 2,000 items. Yeah, we were not organized last fourth quarter. It was a hot mess. And then I spent all of January and February organizing because it was just terrible. Fidgety, don't be nervous. Just be excited. Just be really excited. Fourth quarter is like, I don't know, it's like Christmas for three months for all of us. You know what I mean? Yes, that is very good advice, Lori. You guys, if you use a lot of the, the um, USPS free supplies, the pad of flats, the boxes, get them now. Stock up now. Order them now. Um, she is very correct in fourth quarter everyone's trying to get them and it can take a lot longer stock up on that now and then not even on the free supplies from the usps if you order polys tissue paper anything stock up on that stuff now tape um i have tape for days i get the um with my store coupon i get the ebay tape tape for days Do, uh, fidgety, I don't, knock on wood, I didn't get a lot of returns after Christmas last year, but I didn't, free returns weren't a thing. I have free returns now, so now, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of a little nervous going into Christmas having the free returns on now. So it's, um, A bin store. That's what we do too. Um, Fidgety. We have bins, and each bin we have like A through Z, and then A zero through A nine, all the way up through the Ds. And then um, the polys, we could fit thirty five items in. Like I package mine and weigh them before I list them and put them away. So if they're white, if they're first class, they can get thirty five in a bin. And if they're in padded flats, they go twenty to a bin. And then they have assignments. So like this has been I. It's not like the news. News. This is Keith's handwriting too. He's got terrible handwriting. Um, I don't even know if you can see it. Ugh, why not? Because of the sun. It says A five twenty two. So when we pull it out, um, this goes into the SKU line, the SKU line, however you guys want to say it. And um, so we know what we're looking for when it sells. And then we pull this off. We put it into our handy dandy ceramic cow that I found at a thrift store. I love this guy, he's so cute. And then when I am taking photos, I pull out of here to give it in those items, those locations. So every time something goes out, something goes in and we're reusing our space instead of continuing to get more bins all the time. Yeah. Uh, Rob is right. A lot of that can be um, can be long tail. A lot of stuff can be long tail, though. And then some things will surprise you. I don't even know why I have these pants in my lap. Some dork. Um, I've had like plush that I thought was gonna sit forever go overnight, and then I've got plush that I thought was so cool. Oh, this is gonna go overnight. <laughs> Six months later. Uh, fidgety, that is a very valid concern. Um, taking the free returns off can lower you in the search engine. You're going to lose your TRS, your your 10% final value fees on your on your blah 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 blah. <laughs> the 10% discount on your final value fees. That's a good idea, Holly. Take off the returns on the holiday items just over one month before the holiday. 
It cuts down on frivolous returns. Frivolous returns are rentals. Don't you mean rentals? Like, do you turn them off off? Like completely no returns? Because I was just thinking about See, but I have the same concern as Fidgety. I was thinking about turning a lot of our free returns off as we go into the holidays so we don't have a lot of returns. But then if we down the search engines. How long have we been on? Does anybody know? Because I did not pay attention when I came on. Hi, Adam. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. It's 80 degrees but I'm in front of the air conditioning. Is that actually coming through? I forgot to turn it off. I usually turn off my air conditioning when I do a live show. Do you guys hear like a train noise? Cause I can turn that off. I have an A through zero so far, 25 to a Cha-ching. Ching. You guys don't hear the AC? Okay. When I do um when I do um recorded videos, that AC sounds like a train coming through here. I guess maybe I'm just loud and you just can't hear it over me and my squawky loud voice. Oh cool. It's not a lot of money, but I got this for free. So we bought um, these Neopets and some video games at this one yard sale. And she had a bunch of other stuff in the bin with it, like a little plastic tote. And we paid her for the stuff we had picked out. And she's like, oh, just put it back in the bin and take the whole bin. So um, this just sold for $10. And I didn't pay anything for it. It was free. It's a Buzz Lightyear kids watch. There were a couple of them in there. Hi, Will. What did you say when you came in? I'm sure it was something smart alecky. Where the heck is the eBay coupon? Yeah, okay, you can figure that out on your own, buddy. <laughs> you guys, I have a lot of uh, friends in the chat, so if you hear me being sarcastic to them, it's just because I can't. Because they love me and I love them, so it's cool. Free is good. Yes, free is always good. I love it when people are like, oh, take the whole bin. Take everything. Take it all. This summer is too hot. Let me tell you about hot. And Adam can attest to this. We were under a heat advisory the week we were in Vegas for eBay Open. Oh, my God. Adam, was it hot or was it like death? Oh, Will, I love you guys, too. I'm trying to, um, it's been about an hour. One hundred, yeah, it was like 104, like, no. It was gross. And I'm from Arizona originally, and I'm used to the desert and the heat and the 100 degrees, but I don't like humidity. I really don't like the weather here. But, oh, boy, was it hot. Like, you really just need to stay inside the, the resort because um, it's 80. It says it feels like it's 88 here, but it's 80. It is 80. So it has been about an hour, according to Holly. Um, so if you guys, like, quickly want to ask me anything, AMA me, put it in the, the comments, and I'll answer questions for about five or ten more minutes. And then I will let you guys get back to your days. I have a bag of um, jeans here I need to measure and photograph today. And tonight is, um, I gotta go grocery shopping. That's like, I hate grocery shopping. It's like the worst thing ever. Why can't I just have them delivered here? Because I'm not rich, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, throw your questions in there if you have them. I will, get, I will answer as many as I can quickly. And that's when the chat stops moving, right? <laughs> it was humid for Vegas. Yep, it was humid, it was hot. 
we went, we went into the cabana. This was the day I got food poisoning. And we were in the cabana thingy thingy thing with Casey, and it had air conditioning. And I was that was, but that was like right after I ate whatever made me sick. So it just was not. It was not cool. I sold a pair of Wranglers I was giving away. Yeah, you know, sometimes you have to, though. Um, um, sorry, I had a message come in. I was reading it. Um, sometimes you have to, Adam, especially if you're like, um, every so often I purge a bunch of stuff, throw it on 99 cent auction, but with 649 shipping, if it's first class, and then a lot of my jeans, um, I just like, I get tired of looking at them. So I let them go for 15 or 14, but remember folks, I get my stuff, the majority of it for 99 cents. So I can do that and I'm not taking a loss. Um, if you're not getting 99 cents or Ben's prices and you're like paying 350, um, you probably don't want to do what I do. <laughs> I, like I always try to tell people I want to help people as much as I can, but if you want to follow my business model, you have to make sure that you have the same cost of goods as we get. Because if you're paying more, then our business model is not going to be good for you. Have them bring the groceries to my car. You know what? That's a good idea. See, I have, um, Queen Leah, I don't know how long you've been around, but I have an injury in my back in my L5, and I have nerve damage, and I'm disabled, and I cannot lift more than five pounds. I really can't stand up for very long. I have to sit all the time. Um, and so Keith has to go to the grocery store with me. Like, there's no way around it. Um, either Keith and my kids have to go with me because I can't lift anything, and it's like I'm so helpless. It's ridiculous. So maybe if I could get someone to bring them to my car, Keith could stay back and list, right? Oh, Holly, that's so sweet. Thank you very much for the um, super chat, $5. She says, go buy MC and Bear a couple of avocados. I need to, so thank you. I, I don't know if you saw the picture I put up of my breakfast this morning. I ate the last of our avocados, and now my hamsters don't have any. <laughs> $6.90 with um, padded flat. Yes. And you paid a dollar. Yeah, so if you paid a buck for jeans and you um, get the padded flat for six ninety, you just got to let it go sometimes. Old inventory, you just got to let it go. Um, activity is activity. Cassini loves activity. And um, sorry, people stop messaging me while I'm on here. <laughs> um, yeah, you just got to let the old stuff go. And then if you're letting some stuff go for cheap, have you guys like ever heard the expression, sometimes you have to give stuff away to sell stuff? Another cha-ching, yes. Seems like every time I'm on a live show, like whenever I watch Casey's live shows, my phone blows up. And then whenever I started doing live shows, my phone blows up. It's like live shows are like good luck. Like Cassini smells the fact that you're either watching or on a, on a live show, and she's like, have some sales. She is a high maintenance mistress. Yes, she is. Cassini uh, needs very many things to be pleased. Fickle. That's a good word, Adam. She is fickle. She is a very fickle mistress. Okay, that time it was my kid messaging me sorry well guys it has been about an hour so um i'm going to wrap this up and let you guys get back to your days doing whatever you need to do um happy sales to everybody and this was like a surprise not scheduled middle of the day live show so i really 100 percent appreciate everybody that took the time out of their work day and out of their lives to come here I appreciate it. Um, thank you to my moderators, Holly and Fred, and I did see Jamie in here for a hot second. 
Um, and thank you to Holly and Fred for my very first two super chats. I just got monetized Monday for those of you that didn't know. So that is very awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Um, please do hit the like button. And if you haven't already and you want to, you can subscribe to the channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I am at Flippin' Hippos everywhere. Thank you so much for showing up, guys. I love all of you. Have a really good day.